I usually do this at the door, but you're already in here. Can you help just kind of go around? Let me know if we need more. Thank you. An extra pen. Anybody have an extra pen? Oh, we have an extra pen. Thank you. There you are, my friend. Let me know if you need choice worksheets. One with the, uh, the path and the tree. Are your hands up for choice worksheets? Let's only put your hands up for books. Anybody with a book need? All right, we need a book right here. That's helpful. A book need? Hands up for the book. Book? That's the book. Thank you, my friend. If we need... Okay, good. Creation Health Assessments, the Orange Assessment. It's a seven-page flyer. Okay, good, you have it. Anybody who needs the seven-page flyer, hands up, and the book. We will come straight to you. Still need it? Okay. Right now, thank you so much. We're passing out books. Okay, here's the assessment. Here's a book. And we need an assessment and a book here. Just an assessment, okay. Thank you, sir. Is this, is this a need of a book? Okay, hands are still up for a book. All the way to the back on this corner. And dear, if you can watch the door, because people who are coming in late will definitely not have this. He needs a book. Thank you. Got all kinds of goodies, right? We're set? All right. Am I loud enough for you? <laughs> Woo! I'm sorry. Okay. Of those who were here this morning, how many of you read anything in the book or even looked at the assessment and started to fill it in? Very good. Wonderful. You get A's, you get A's absolutely. Passing grades, okay? Now, who, who needs a little bit of help understanding the assessment? Is, is there any question you may have? Okay? Because what we're going to do a little bit each time is... I'll kind of give a homework assignment and then we'll kind of talk about it. So here's what we'll do tomorrow. If you have questions about your assessment, your survey, your specific needs, of course, we're going to start again what time tomorrow morning? 9.45 to 10.45, then again at 4 to 5. But from 10.45 in the morning or afternoon, if you say, you know, I just don't get this, I don't understand it, can you tell me more? What we're not able to do for the sake of time. More you want more assessments? They're in, the, they're in the back box by the wall. We have plenty of tools and resources. So if you have any concerns about things, feel free to just look me up, come up and say, I'd like to have more information. I'll be happy to walk you through whatever you need. What we're not able to do in this time period is to talk about where creation health originated from, how creation health actually, this is amazing, actually was the philosophy that Disney said, that's what we want for our hospital for the 21st century. So Disney wanted to create the healthiest town in America. And I'm literally talking about the Disney. And they chose Florida Hospital, you'll read it in your book, to be that hospital of choice and it was because of creation health. That's amazing. And look at celebration, 
health on your computer, just log in Florida Hospital or just say Celebration is the name of the town. Celebration Health. You will see a hospital there real close to Disney that is 100% Creation Health. Nobody Everything about it. Nobody in it. And no, nobody in the hospital? That's true. You're a good point. This guy's funny up here. He said there's no one in it because they're all Creation Healthy. So I wish, but that's actually a good one. I better remember that one. I'll put myself out of business. All right. So the main question that we're looking at today is, are you living creation healthy? Now here is something that I have brought 30 of. Okay? I have 30 of these. This is a 310-page textbook with... Basically, it's your personal study guide for the seminar. So when we teach this, what we're doing is, this is your workbook, okay? That green book, that's just happy reading. This is your workbook. This has the assessments, the tips, the tools, the tricks, all of the cool stuff, and it's not just the PowerPoint put into the book, it's a lot of new information. So what we've done with this presentation is we've said, okay, we're gonna have the PowerPoint go through, and at times you will see this slide pop up, and it will be guiding you to a page in the book that you can fill out. Now, these are usually $25, but for a camp meeting price, they said they could do a work for 20 okay? So a 310-page study guide. You're welcome to look at this after. We can even go through check, cash, credit card, whatever. The Wi-Fi is a little tricky, but I would encourage you tomorrow to come up and see if you could get one of these because I'm going to help you take this journey even farther. And, and is that 20? Well, look at you. Now, I'm going to get you a better one. Okay. So, so just come up after okay. because I see that this one got damaged on the top from the, the, the FedEx, but the rest of them are really in good shape. So this is the study guide that is what is being presented there. So. I'll be happy to walk you through this and a bunch of other things that we have available. But let's, uh, let's begin. And where do we begin? Prayer. Prayer. All right. Let's pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the opportunity that we have to be here. Lord, it is these people's choice to be here because they want to understand the power of their choice. Lord, we're going to unpack some things from creation where you showed choice in your love for mankind. It's a powerful story. Father, right now we know that it is choice, not chance, that determines our destiny. So Father, right now we choose to have an open mind, we choose to let everything that we hear sink in, and then we choose to let the Spirit speak to us and tell us the way we should go and who we should share this with. Thank you for this time that we have to be together. We ask these things in your name. Amen. All right, my friends, we are going to dive into choice. First, I want to share with you a story. There's a newspaper reporter, and he went to another country, and he met a monk. And he said, I'm doing a report, and I'd like to go up to the monastery, which is way, way up in the mountains. And he thought there'd be a trail or some sort of trek up the stairs. So this monk said, okay, come with me. The newspaper reporter followed the monk not up the hill, but down the hill. They got into this, this rickety basket, hooked to a rope, and the monk said, come on, get in. You want to go up there, don't you? Yeah, yeah, okay, sure. The newspaper reporter jumped in, and they started pulling the rope. And they started going up the hill. Now, the newspaper reporter 
as they're getting higher and higher and higher and he's starting to look down and they're getting higher and higher and higher, he starts to look up instead of down because he's looking at what? The rope. He's getting more and more nervous. The monk's noticing this. So the monk goes, what, what's the problem? Newspaper reporter gets up the courage and he says, so how often do you change this rope? And the monk says this, whenever it breaks. <laughs> it's funny, but is that not how we treat our health? Whenever it breaks. So choice. Every time we have a letter, we're going to have a synopsis slide. The first step toward improved health is making consistent healthy choices which turn into habits and lead to lifestyle improvement. In every presentation, we're also going to have God's desire for us. It'll be a scripture verse. This one's 3 John 1, 2. And it says this, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. Is that a precious promise? So here is the great thing about creation health. It has been proven to add how many years to your life? Ten. Living the creation lifestyle has been proven to add ten years. And you're like, okay, well, prove that to me. Well, here's the deal. The life expectancy of an American born today is 78.2 years. But this year, over 70,000 Americans have reached their 100th birthday. And what are they doing that the average American isn't? Have you ever heard of the Blue Zones study? You have. It's by Dan Buettner. They've studied five areas in the world where people live to 100. And what was one of those areas, friends? Loma Linda, California. I knew you probably would know that. It's probably in our Adventist health study. But here's what I learned, and I had never seen this before. Did you know that Dan Buettner had put together a list, nine things of a blue zone lesson? I had never seen this. So I wanted to share this with you. This is what people do who live to 100, Loma Linda, California, and all of the other places. These are the lessons that these people do, and there's nine of them. We're going to focus on eight. They move naturally. The world's longest lived people don't pump iron, they don't run marathons, and they don't join gyms. Instead, they live in environments that constantly nudge them into moving without thinking about it. They grow gardens and they don't have mechanical conveniences for house and yard work. They move naturally. Blue Zone lesson number two. People who live to a hundred live with a purpose. So knowing your sense of purpose is worth up to guess how many years of life expectancy. Seven. Imagine that. And what is our life purpose as a Christian? It's to bring glory to God. The other people, they translate it as why I wake up in the morning, or they call it plan de vida. So they have another reason of why they wake up with a purpose, but Christians have a very vital reason to glorify God. They have their purpose clear. Downshift. Even people in the blue zones experience stress, and stress leads to chronic inflammation associated with every major age-related disease. But here is what's so cool. How does he say that Adventists, and he writes this, Adventists downshift? What does he say they do? Sabbath. What? Sabbath. Sabbath, okay. 
Something a little different, something you do every day. They pray. So Okinawans take a few moments each day to remember their ancestors. The Icarians take a nap, and the Sardinians do happy hour. That sounds like it would work. But the Adventists pray. This is a really cool one. It's called the 80% rule. It's 80% full. So this has to do with your stomach. The 20% gap between not being hungry and feeling full could be the difference between losing weight or gaining it. Now see if you recognize this counsel. People in the blue zones eat their smallest meal in the late afternoon or early evening, and then they don't eat any more the rest of the day. Do we know anybody that's given us that counsel maybe back in the 1800s? What's the hour that you probably shouldn't eat past? Five or six, right? And we're supposed to eat breakfast like kings, lunch like, and supper like. And look what's happening. Evidence-based science is proving Ellen White 100% accurate. And you're going to see that over and over and over. Here's a really cool one. It's called the plant slant. The plant slant. Guess what? Every centenarian, which is the hundred-year-olds, guess what every single one of them have in common as a cornerstone of their diet? Just, just yell out something. It's not chocolate. I wish it was. That'd be a good thing. I've got to start eating chocolate. Vegetables, plants, nuts, okay. Guess what it is? Beans. Pretty neat. You're going to find out why in the nutrition presentation, which is a farther into the week. They eat beans. Soy, black, red, flava. That's what centenarians eat. This is research done by Dan Butner in the Blue Zones, remember. So I'm not giving you biased information. I'm just telling you like it is. Went too fast. Okay, the other thing is belong. All but five of the 263 centenarians interviewed belong to some faith-based community. Denomination doesn't seem to matter. Research shows that attending faith-based services four times per month will add four to 14 years of life expectancy. Is that amazing? Here's another one. Loved ones first. Successful centenarians in the Blue Zones put their families first. They commit to a life partner, which can add up to three years of life expectancy, and they invest in their children with time and love. And they'll be more likely to care for you when the time comes. How many of you are cared for by a 90-year-old lady at church? They sure do take good care of us, don't they? Here's a really interesting one. Last one, number eight. It's called the right tribe. The right tribe. The world's longest-lived people chose were to born into social circles that supported healthy behaviors. So research from these studies show that smoking, obesity, happiness, and even loneliness are contagious, so the social networks of long-lived people have favorably shaped their health. Is that amazing? Eight lessons from the Blue Zones. And Loma Linda was chosen as one of those. And Seventh-day Adventists are in this book, and it's an incredible read by Dan Buettner. But which direction are your choices taking you? That's really the ultimate question. Are they taking you that way to bad food? Are they taking you this way to inactivity? Or maybe they're taking you another way to unmanaged stress. Think about it. But anything less than a conscious commitment to the important is an unconscious commitment to the unimportant. 
By exercising our power of choice, we intentionally commit ourselves and direct our energies to that which is most important. Here's where we're going to go. The choice worksheet that you have in front of you, I want you to pull out because we are going to watch a DVD at this time in the lecture. And each time, the DVD is going to come at a different time, but the answers from the DVD, okay, it's going to give you, let me say that again, the DVD is going to give you the answers, but you're going to have to work a little. You get to listen and then say, that's the answer, and write it in. I'll give you the answers at the end, and I want to warn you, there's two bonus questions. Bonus questions get you prizes. Okay? So let's see if this is, uh, this is worth your while. Okay, so if I have a bonus question that only is going to come from a DVD, who'd like to win this? Exactly. All you've got to do is listen, write it down, jump up. I don't know how we're going to judge this. It's just going to be a blast. And then we also have a bag, live life to the fullest. And I've got all kinds of neat stuff. I'm going to have to hide my boxes. You're going to start finding where I hide stuff. So here's the deal. Everyone grab your worksheet, grab a pen. I don't know if we're going to dim the lights. I know AV guys have this all under control. We're going to watch a video. It's totally awesome. You're going to thoroughly enjoy it. And then we'll come back together and talk about the answers. Deal? Here we go. Okay, I just don't have sound, but I think you got that. Awesome. Thank you. Flying from Seattle to San Francisco to be just one degree off course? Well, he would wind up missing the airport by 10 miles. One degree doesn't seem like much, but in the end, it takes us somewhere completely different. Our choices are like headings on a compass. If our choices are off by even just a little bit, we can miss our final destination by miles. One degree, one choice is hardly noticeable. But if left uncorrected, we'll end up where we never wanted to be. The ability to choose is powerful. Correctly used, unlimited opportunity is ours. By consistently making the best choices, we become unstoppable. It unleashes our vast potential and life becomes a satisfying journey of abundant happiness. During this creation health presentation on choice, we'll learn about the physiology of choice, the importance of making good choices, how to strengthen our frontal lobe functioning in order to make better decisions, and the trustworthy principles that lead to dynamic living. Dr. Winnie King explores the issues and techniques for staying on course by consistently making the best choices. The power of choice is one of the strongest forces on Earth. It has the ability to build up and the potential to tear down. Are you using your power of choice for good? The power of choice is located in a part of the brain called the frontal lobe. This is the mind's seat of authority. It's the brain's decision center. The powers of judgment, reasoning, social norms, and long-term planning all come from here. The most creatures have this brain function, but we find something very different in humans regarding the size of the frontal lobes. For instance, in dogs, the frontal lobes comprise just 7% of their brain, and it's 17% in chimps. But in humans, the frontal lobes take up more than a third of the brain's total area. And this tells us that our reasoning and planning capabilities are intricate, powerful, and complex. Unlimited opportunity awaits those who harness this power by making the wisest choices. The power to choose is having the opportunity and ability to evaluate multiple options and then selecting the one we prefer. Every day we make choices intentionally and unintentionally. Deciding to take action requires us to exercise our power of choice. Doing nothing is also a decision. Living by design or by default is a choice. We either shape circumstances or we are shaped by them. It's our God-given privilege to take responsibility for our lives and align our choices with our values, beliefs, and dreams. If 
first step toward improving our life is deliberately choosing the better choice in the moment of decision. Having the ability to choose is motivating and it creates numerous physical and psychological benefits. For example, residents in a certain nursing home were given more control of their lives and extra choices. They were told they could have omelets or scrambled eggs for breakfast, but that they would have to choose the night before. They could watch movies on Wednesday or Thursday night, but they would have to sign up in advance. They were shown plants from which to choose one for their room and were instructed to water and take care of it themselves. Residents on another floor of the same nursing home, however, weren't allowed to choose what they wanted for breakfast. Neither were they offered the opportunity to sign up to see a movie. Movies were just shown. Lastly, they were given a plant for their room and the nurse took care of it for them. The researchers were studying how the ability to choose and a sense of control affects people. The residents who were given choices and a sense of control were more alert. They participated more and felt better. Additionally, fewer people in this group had died 18 months later. This astonishing fact indicates that choice and control have a positive impact on our longevity. Ever find yourself struggling to make a decision? When making choices, remember these two principles. First, bad choices cancel good choices. For example, when it comes to diet, some people give themselves a free day where they can enjoy a few guilty pleasures. Before they know it, they've had chocolate cake for lunch, Dairy Queen on the way home from work, and cookies and milk before bedtime. A string of bad choices easily cancels good choices. Reinforce good choices by reducing counterproductive ones. Enjoy a guilty pleasure, but without wiping out the excellent progress that you've made. The second principle to remember is that good choices taken to extremes create poor outcomes. A perfect example is exercise. Exercise is good, but too much is unhealthy. Hours in the gym can cause people to burn out on exercise altogether. Strive for balance and reinforce good choices by reducing or eliminating counterproductive ones. A healthy functioning frontal lobe is vital for living a healthy life. Everything we hope to be, have, do, or become starts here. And it's within our power to strengthen this part of our brain, which will help us to make better decisions, thereby improving the quality of our life. Here are six ways that you can choose to start strengthening your frontal lobe immediately. Choose to think positive thoughts. The right frontal lobe tends to be over-dominant when a person is depressed. When we think positive thoughts, we decrease the negative activity in that area of the brain. Choose to engage in physical and mental activity. The brain and the body affect each other. Exercise increases blood flow to the brain, which increases organ function. Doing thought-provoking activities such as crossword puzzles, Sudoku, and other mind games also increases blood flow to the brain. Enjoy a massage. It helps increase blood flow throughout the body, and when this happens, the body naturally prioritizes blood flow to the brain. So a massage is not only a great way to soothe tired muscles, but it also increases mental performance too. Get some sun. Sunshine stimulates the entire body. It reduces cortisol, a stress hormone, which is important because your brain functions best when it's relaxed and not stressed. All of this works together to sharpen the mind. Eat plenty of complex carbohydrates. The brain uses carbohydrates almost exclusively as its fuel. Carbohydrates are essential to healthy frontal lobe functioning. Adding complex carbohydrates to your diet not only helps you feel better and think more clearly, it'll brighten your mood. Listen to enjoyable music. Music affects your body, so choose uplifting, positive, happy, peaceful music. Eliminate music that creates negative feelings. Ask yourself, what does this music make me think? How does it make me feel? 
If the answer is negative, then change the channel. We can improve our lives right now by deciding to make better choices, whether it's what you eat, see, hear, or experience. Choose wisely, live well. In John 10.10, Jesus said he wants to give us abundant life, abundant in health, happiness, strength, joy, and satisfaction. Are your choices creating that kind of life? If not, regardless of where you are today, you're only one choice away from improving your life. You're only one choice away from a new beginning. So choose to intentionally exercise your power of choice. Choose to unplug and rest often. Choose to create an environment that nurtures your soul. Choose to stay young and healthy through activity. Choose to trust in God. Choose to enjoy interpersonal relationships with others. Choose to have a positive, life-empowering outlook and choose to enjoy life-enriching nutrition. This is life as God intends it. He wants us to live life to the fullest. Well, we've covered a lot because choice is the foundational element of creation health. Don't forget, choice is within your control and it's a powerful thing. And most importantly, remember to be kind to yourself when you drift off course. All you have to do is adjust your course and keep going. And if you do this often enough, you'll eventually reach your desired destination. Because it really is true what U.S. Secretary of State Colin Powell once said, none of us can change our yesterdays, but all of us can change our tomorrows. That's Creation Health. Right, so that wasn't too hard, was it? Okay, well, let's, uh, let's keep going just because of time. But first question on your worksheet says this. The power of choice is located in the? Frontal lobe. Frontal lobe. Very good. The frontal lobe takes up what percentage of the brain? In dogs? Chimps? Humans? How many in cats, do you know? This is really funny. I'm not a cat lover, but I threw this in. Oh, three and a half. Now, I'm not going to say anything about that, because I can preach that for a while. But, uh, and I know there's a lot of people who have cats. That's why I wasn't going to do that. Um, so three and a half percent of the brain is, is a cat in the frontal lobe. So uh, just throw that in there. The frontal lobe is the seat of will, judgment, reasoning, social norms, and long-term planning. Okay? Where's the frontal lobe? Right here. And you, that's funny, this guy went, Doosh. All right, right there. All of which helps us make us what? Healthy, life-giving choices. Takes place right here in the frontal lobe. Let's continue. Doing nothing is also a... Very good. Is it a decision? Yes. Good choices taken to blank create poor outcomes. You guys are amazing. Okay, bonus question for a prize. Okay, here's what we're going to do. Because I know I can't hear all of you say this all at once, and you're going to jump up, knock each other over. We don't want that to happen. So I'm just going to pick a card. And if you can tell me the answer, you get the prize. So this will be a lot of fun for me. We'll see what happens. Choice and control have a positive, don't say anything, remember, it could be your card. Choice and control have a positive impact on our Rachel Gripentraw. G -ch -ch. G R I P E N T R O in a letter. Are you Rachel? Yes. Wonderful, Rachel. What's the answer, Rachel? Choice and control have a positive impact on our Close? Extend that a little longer, our how long we live. Life expectancy. Whoa, I heard it. Longevity. You got the L right. So come on up. You get, a, you get the bag or the little goblet. Congratulations. All right, here we go. We got another one. Carrie. Cow doll. Cow doll. Carrie Cow doll. Are you here? 
Okay, are you ready? Okay, I know you're getting all excited sitting on go way back there. Blank is the fundamental element of creation health. She's uh, going for her lifeline, which is her husband. And you're correct! Woo! All right, I have no idea how you pulled that off, but that was awesome. Okay, so choice is the fundamental element of creation health. And I will use my lovely Vanna White assistant to bring that to you. So was that fun? All right, we're going to do that every single session. Okay, from here on out. These videos are amazing. Very well done. You'll get to meet some incredible people. We'll talk about some amazing things. But where do you think we go from here? We're going to switch gears and get back into our presentation. I want to begin in the beginning. So it says here, the creation story in Genesis 1 and 2 is a chronicle of choices. This is what I found so fascinating. The first choice is this. God chooses to create a world. He creates cosmos from chaos, and he plants a garden. And each day of the creation week is filled with a myriad of material choices implemented at the what? The speed of light. And the first five days are covered at breathtaking speed in 25 verses. And then on the sixth day, what does God do? Let us make people in our image. They, the Trinity, create conscious human beings in their own likeness. And they create the love institution of marriage. But what else happens in a chronicle of choices in the garden? That's right. God's choice to create us gives us our identity. You are defined by God and God alone. He identifies you as his own, says 2 Corinthians. This identity issue is an important part of living the abundant life. You matter to God. And hopefully that will give you confidence to move purposefully in faith. It also gives us the power of choice and he gives us the ability to determine our purpose and destiny. So here's what's so amazing about that. You can see there's a path to a tree. And perhaps the most astounding choice God gave was whether or not to believe him. He warned them of the dire consequences of eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. You shall surely die. And he had set up at that time the conditions for real choice. Allowing free choice requires a commitment to excellence. Unless you know your product will stand the test of time, you will seek to restrict choice. Quality gives the confidence to allow freedom. Is that amazing? What an incredible statement. And it is through the freedom of choice that the other seven creation health principles are patterned into in our daily life. So here's the key. We have the freedom to choose. What does Thomas Jefferson say? Freedom is the right to choose, the right to create for oneself the alternatives of choice. Without the possibility of choice, a man is not a man, but he is a member, an instrument, and a thing. But choice is the ability to direct our will. Aristotle said this, excellence is never an accident. It is always the result of high intention, sincere effort, and intelligent execution. It represents the wise choice of many alternatives. Choice, not chance, determines your destiny. 
You say that out loud with me so you can remember it. Choice, not chance, determines my destiny. The blessings of having choice, there's several. It increases the individual's sense of personal control and feelings of intrinsic motivation. In turn, it is associated with numerous physical and psychological benefits. Dr. Bernie Siegel of Yale Surgeon, an author of the New York Times bestseller, Love, Medicine, and Miracles, was once interviewed about the dreaded disease of cancer. He stated this, patients who get well when they're not supposed to are not having accidents or miracles or spontaneous remissions. They're experiencing self-induced healing. Now, as Christians, we believe there's probably also some miracle-working power in our Creator and our Heavenly Physician. But he is saying that it's self-induced healing. People who choose their own therapies have fewer side effects than those who silently submit to treatment because their doctors told them to. So choice empowers because it helps the person take ownership of their situation, which in turn produces positive results. The choice is yours, though. We must first exercise wisdom when making choices because they determine the course of our lives. And today is the first day of the rest of your life. So where are you going? The choice is yours. Karl Barth said this, though no one can go back and make a brand new start, anyone can start from now and make a brand new ending. Amen. Amen. I love that quote. Choosing wisely isn't easy unless you choose to make one wise choice at a time. It is important that our decisions remain consistent with our will, our beliefs, and our goals. The gift of choice, folks, comes with responsibility. But before choosing, I want you to remember something. The concept is halt. Anybody ever heard of halt? Now, he's not HALT, but I'm going to show you what H stands for, and you tell me if this guy doesn't reflect this. Hungry. How simple is it to get a bite to eat and then make a decision? Now, I wouldn't say eat all day, but, but think about this. Don't make a decision when you are hungry. What do you think the A is? Angry. How easy is it to say, let me just take a minute. I'm going to go calm down. I'm going to walk outside. I'll be right back. Instead of react. L. Lonely. Just say, I want to take a moment for some comfort. Let me call someone before you make a big decision. Your spouse, friend, parent, church member, pastor. Hungry, angry, lonely, and then tired. Let's reconvene you tomorrow. Sometimes you can't do that. But it is really wise to make decisions when you are rested. Learn to practice it. You're going to see incredible results. I know some of you are writing that. Hungry, angry, lonely, and tired. But here's the easiest choice you can make. Choose to what? Smile. Now, research has actually shown that smiling is good for your health. I'm going to prove that through some studies, okay? Smiling is contagious, okay? Look around and smile at someone you don't know and see if they can, I'm pretty cool, okay, I'm going to hold this back. Okay, is everyone smiling and giggling? It is, and here's the study. Just seeing one person smiling activates the area of your brain that controls your facial movement, which leads to a grin. Isn't that cool? All right, check this one out. 
Smiling lowers stress and anxiety. I'm going to click over here. This study says that it reports that doing exactly that has health benefits. The next time you're feeling stressed, just try smiling to calm yourself down. I was stressed there, so I took a moment. Good now. Guys are all staring at me, but some of you are smiling. I appreciate that. All right, third one. Smiling releases endorphins. How valuable is that? These endorphins are the same chemicals you get from working out or running, resulting in what is known as a runner's high. Smile more to get that high without running. Yeah, good as that. Right? I did this research for you guys. Trust me, this is good stuff. Right? I got some more. Smiling strengthens your immune system. One study found that hospitalized children who were visited by storytellers and puppeteers who made them smile and laugh had higher white blood cell counts than those children who weren't visited. Exactly. This one's really cool. <laughs> You'll be more attractive. So let's try this. I'm going to have you turn to someone you don't know, and you're going to say this line. You ready? If you weren't here, I would be the best-looking person in the room. <laughs> let's just try that, okay? And see if you laugh, right? So look at someone... You, you don't think I'm serious. Look at someone and say, if you weren't here, I'd be the best looking person in the room. And then smile with that cheesy grin. You are already more attractive. How good is that? All right. Ready for the next one? Here we go. You'll be more approachable. Okay? Turn that frown upside down if you want to make some friends. Studies have found that people are more willing to engage socially with others who are smiling. A smile is an inviting facial expression that tells people you are willing to talk and interact with them. Smiling will make you more comfortable. A study found that smiling can make you more comfortable in situations you would otherwise feel awkward in. You'll even seem, I love this, seem more trustworthy. You've got to be careful there. If you want to improve your credibility, simply smile more. What could be easier than that? Trusting doesn't come easily to many, but smiling at someone may help. This was actually a study in the University of Pittsburgh. Yes, a question. No, a comment. A comment. That's even better. Very good. That's right, that's right. So here's what she said. She said, smile, it looks good on you. Or it looks good on your face. Okay, smile, it looks good on you. Now are you smiling when you say that? Okay, obviously, all right? So she's cheering up the world by telling everyone to smile. And I am proving that you are right with evidence-based science. Absolutely, you're more than welcome. You'll also be a better leader. Right? These are nine points. You just can't get every place else. Nine points only here at Minnesota Camp Meeting. You'll be a better leader. If you're in a position of power or want to be, smiling may be the key to your success. Yeah. So the impact of good choices is what? More control and improved health. So the question is, 
How satisfied are you with your life? Are you dissatisfied with any area? Have you done your creation health assessment and found the area where you are weak? Where the area where you need improvement? Did it confirm something you already knew? Or did it surprise you? Both. Very good answer. So I would encourage you tonight, or tomorrow, whenever, do the creation health assessment. Just see what happens. And then, what are you going to do? Choose to do something differently that affects your area where you need improvement. So in the study guide, this is where I would stop, because this is about an hour and a half presentation usually. I would stop there and I'd say, okay, let's take a satisfaction with life scale. This is one of the assessments in the book. You obviously don't have the book, but if you want it, this is one of those areas that we would write down the homework assignment. So we'll continue on, but this is a fantastic life scale. But what I want you to do is to focus on some things. I know my time is running short, but it says, number one, I want you to focus on choosing knowledge. So you can make a lot of choices. We've talked a lot about choices already. We've talked about some very, very simple things. But now I just want you to say this, I choose knowledge. Why? Because a wise man is strong and a man of knowledge makes strength greater. With so many choices to make, how can we be sure to make the right ones? Gaining and applying knowledge should be a way of life, folks. We cannot responsibly go through life intellectually idle. Knowledge, when put into action, creates strength, it creates power, and thoughtful decisions. I want you to choose reason. Come, let us reason together. We are encouraged by the prevalent philosophy of our day to do what? Take a leap of blind faith. Can anyone show me in Scripture where God talks about blind faith? Okay. Abraham and Isaac. Okay. But God's ways are not necessarily blind faith. They are reasonable. Right? So God has given us strong reasons to believe in Him. What are some of those reasons? Knowledge of who God is as the Creator. Promises in the Holy Bible. Prophecies being fulfilled every day. And our own personal experience about choosing to be with Him every moment of every day. I'm going to go through three slides very quickly. If you want to see them later, we can. But I want to get to something that's very important. Your response is your choice. So I want you to think about this. Between stimulus and response, there is a space. Okay? In that space is our power to choose our response. And in our response lies our growth and our freedom. It's in that moment. This is what Stephen Covey says. He calls this the integrity of the moment of choice. Quality of life depends on what happens in the space between stimulus and response. Quality of life. I love that statement. That's Stephen Covey. So here's your moment of decision. You've got your stimulus, you've got your response. But recognize there's four areas, freedom to choose, that are being affected by that. Your self-awareness of what's going on, your imagination about what may be going on, your conscience, you're starting to process internally what's happening, and your independent will. Those are four things that are in that place between response and stimulus. And if we simply increase the reaction time and allow our self-awareness and our imagination and our conscience and our independent will we are likely to give a much more balanced response and make this a habit could give us a more controlled life. So the rest of your life, you want to be average? 
or do you want to be memorable? By exercising our power of choice, we intentionally commit ourselves and direct our energies to that which is most important. My dear friends, you are one choice away from living a better life. One choice away from living a better life. So don't be afraid to make a choice. You know why? Because we learn wisdom from failure, much more than success. We often discover what we will do by finding out what we will not do. In any given moment, we have two options. To choose to step forward into growth or to choose to step back into safety. If something is growing, it is alive, right? God wants you to step forward boldly into his will. What does Scripture say? Choose you this day whom you will. Absolutely. Here's a thought to ponder. I found this on a blog. The wealthiest place on the planet is the graveyard. This is amazing. I don't know who wrote this. Because in the graveyard are inventions that we never were exposed to, ideas and dreams that never became reality, hopes and aspirations that were never acted upon. Why? Because someone didn't choose to make a choice to grow. So choose to change. I want you to be committed. I want you to pray for wisdom. I want you to take inventory. What's going well? What needs improving? Using those self-assessments will be a good guide. Reading the Creation Health book, getting the personal study guide, but looking in God's book. It's also a terrific place for you to gauge where your life is going. Holy Scripture's got all the answers. I want you to prioritize. What do you need to work on first? What do you need to celebrate? I want you to follow through. One good choice often leads to another good choice. And then I want you to reinforce. I want to have you to be able to understand that there are creative ways that you can set goals and accomplish them. But there's a certain way to accomplish goals. How many of you have ever heard of SMART? Okay, you can find this online. It's very important for you to understand that if you write down your goal, you have a greater chance of achieving your goal. It doesn't matter what your goal is, and this is the important part about this session right here in Choice. I don't want you to go home feeling so miserable about your health that you say, I am going to walk five miles every single day. You may do that the first day, and you may not be able to walk the next day. It happens to me. Okay, so here's the deal. I want you to make a choice that is so simple. Instead of drinking that beverage, I'm going to drink water. Instead of having that item of food, I'm just going to have an apple. Instead of driving by the mailbox in my car, I'm going to park my car in the garage, I'm going to walk down the driveway, I'm going to get my mail, and I'm going to walk back in the house. It's as simple as that. Because what will happen is, when you have specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and time-specific goals, you will celebrate when you do it well, when you accomplish it, and it will lead to another good goal, and another good goal, and another good goal, and you will find that you will not be going to the mailbox to get your mail. You'll grab the mail, and then you'll walk around the street because you have so much energy, because you've made a choice to make one difference in your life that is specific, measurable, attainable, realistic. That's the key to this whole thing. 
So I've told you how to do choice and all of these things, but it just takes you choosing something in your life that you can be successful at. It's it's about this, and it says, this goal-setting process brings clarity because you know what you're doing now and are clear on what you're doing next. I want you to celebrate progress. Here's the most important thing that I will say in this hour. Creation health is not about perfection. Creation health is about progress. You don't have to do all of these things perfectly. Because you know why? This isn't a plan. This is a philosophy of living. And you will never reach that that point of creation health perfect. It's just just not going to happen. But if you continue to make a choice to have progress in your life, you will change the course of your life and change the destiny. And other people in your family who are watching you, grandma, mom, big sister, you will likely impact their walk as well. That's ultimately what this is about. So how many of you choose to make a choice to do something differently that you can celebrate this week? All right? If there was 12 people in the room, we'd talk about that. If there was an hour and a half, we'd do it. But right now, I'm going to honor your time. This has been awesome. I've enjoyed every minute of this. Tomorrow we kick in with rest. Now we're doing rest after you've slept all night. That's the key. Okay, so no napping at 9.45 to 10.45. You're going to have an awesome time tomorrow with rest. Blessings to you, my fellow Minnesotans. See, I said that right. All right, have a wonderful evening. So grateful you are here. Feel free to roll. Feel free to come up and talk to me, talk to my wife. Whatever you want to talk about, if you want to buy a book, I'm happy to take money. As always, you're welcome.